know, he would step across the line. Habitually. He's a habitual line stepper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. On the Habitual Line Steppers podcast, I am Garrett Langley Henson. I'm Terry Ricardo. Shave the second. Let's get straight to it. Yes, sir. And we just had probably the best weekend of football in my whole life. Here. Yeah, it was fantastic, dude. Absolutely fantastic, bro. <laughs> we had four games. All of them came down to the last play in the last second. Three of them were won by a game-winning field goal. The other one was won in overtime. Yep. Terry, let's dissect and discuss we're going to get right to it. We'll start with the Bills game. Bills versus Chiefs. Yeah. The Bills had, uh, just put up like 50 points on the Patriots, put the, the first perfect offensive game in NFL history. Yeah, something crazy. Going up again. Uh, the Chiefs, who have the, the most impressive array of attacking talent in the league. And, Terry, they didn't disappoint. No. In, in the last minute of the game, there was more scoring than the Falcons did all season. <laughs> Yeah, not nah, bro. That game, the Bills Chiefs game was crazy, man. I can't believe that's the difference, bro. Them Cowboys fans are probably looking at that shit like, how the fuck did they get down the whole field in 14 seconds and we couldn't even go like, you know, 50 yards to even attempt a touchdown? Timeouts, man. That was a big thing. The Chiefs held on to their timeouts. That boy Mahomes. Also, they didn't run a QB run up the middle of the field. <laughs> <laughs> a QB draw, dude. Yeah, but those. I don't know. I don't understand what the Bills are doing, though. Like, defensively, these motherfuckers were, like, guarding the sidelines and shit. I'm like, bro, what are y'all doing? They had, like, four dudes back. They had timeouts. Yeah, they had four dudes back. Then they were sending four guys at Mahomes like he was going to be back there for, like, three seconds trying to drop back. The whole scheme was stupid. There was nobody in the middle. So let's, let's break it down, Terry. Right? Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs take the lead with, like, I don't know, 90 seconds left in the game, something like that. The Bills drop down, yeah. 80 seconds. Then Josh Allen leads, like, one of the most incredible drives I've ever seen in my life. Marches him all the way down the field. Yep. Takes the lead with only 13 seconds left to play, Terry. Yeah. Now, at this moment is where I walked out of the Charlotte Hornets arena, and I said, <laughs> this game is over. There's no need to continue watching. Yeah. There's only 13 seconds left, Terry. They have to go all the way in the field goal range. Surely, surely there's no way that the Chiefs can get this done. Well, took two plays. <laughs> like you uh, said, the the, um, the Bills' number one defense. <laughs> yeah, right. What happened to that? Everybody couldn't stop kissing the Bills' dick about how great their defense was and how they got all these Pro Bowl stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then they decided to defend the sideline when the Chiefs have three timeouts. <laughs> And there's no need to do that. Hey, that's coaching. That's coaching. But them players, they went out there and executed and The safeties are 70 yards deep. <laughs> <laughs> Tyreek Hill was like, oh, okay, I'll just catch this at the line of scrimmage and run 20 yards in two seconds yeah. and take no time off the clock. It was idiotic, bro. It was straight up idiotic. And this is going to be a problem for Josh, uh, your boy Josh Allen, man. Are they? Is he ever going to make the Super Bowl? If he has to go against fucking – Patrick Mahomes, like almost every time he has to get by him, he has to get by Joe Burrow. You know what I'm saying? He has to get by like the Titans. Listen, his team. He did his thing. He did good enough to win. He Josh did. Allen deserved to win this game. Oh, but Mahomes played yeah. better. Oh, he did. But Mahomes did play better. I give you that. But let's say that the Bills decide to squib that kick with 13 seconds left. So what? Clock doesn't start until somebody touches it. I'm going to just touch it, right. go down immediately. You maybe get one second off the clock. Maybe. If that. Like, it doesn't matter if you squib it or not. Even if you squib it and not catch it, I can just go down on a knee. Stop the clock. 12 seconds. Okay. Cool. Probably two seconds. Yeah. All right. They still, so they still that, got it. Hey, that's the difference between 13 and 11. They did <laughs> To kick the ball out of the end zone, Terry, is fucking retarded. <laughs> no other team in the league would do that. Everyone else is going to make you catch this and take some time off the clock. I would have kicked it to like this. I'm like, we'll just let you have it at 25. Don't take any time. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and get cozy. Think about what you guys are going to do next. I would have just I don't know. I like kicked it to like the 10. 
or at least around there. Not trying to really get poop. This guy kicked that shit to like the ten yard yeah. line. Make them have a return. Take some time off the clock. Then after that, right? They 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 make the horrible decision to kick it through the back of the end zone. Then they play the the fucking prevent defense guarding the sideline yep. when they have three timeouts with the safeties all the way back like they're going to throw a fucking Hail Mary and not going for a field goal. Stupid. Travis Kelsey, before the play, he was like, oh, I saw they lined up in that shit, and I know exactly where the hole was going to be. Mm-hmm. And I went up to Patrick Mahomes, and I was like, listen, I'm not running the route that's called. Like, I'm just going to run to where the <laughs> open space is. Throw me the yeah. And that's exactly what he did. Setting them up for the uh, game time. Field I mean, that, that was honestly like two of the easiest passes that Mahomes had the whole game. He didn't like didn't have to do it. They didn't even think about it. He was like, "Hike, throw it, easy, easy fucking money." The Bills, they just gave that one away, dude. Like, you don't even need to rush anybody. You know what is up. They have to get you have it's fourteen seconds or thirteen, however many seconds on the clock. 13. Let them hold on to the ball. Like, Mahomes had the ball for uh, one second in his hand, and he throws it. Two plays, it was, what, four seconds? Then they kicked it with four seconds left? Even if they had and- fucking ten seconds, they still could have got the shit off. Like, what the hell are y'all doing? They missed hey, man. Out of that, dude. They must have seen the uh, the Bucks-Rams game, and they're like, we're not letting anyone get behind us for the last play. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're going to put our safeties on a three-yard line. <laughs> Even though all they have to do is kick a field goal. It's, it just didn't make any sense, bro. And I think even at the end of the game, like in the press conference, the coach, he was even like, I thought we were going to squib it. He didn't say that, but he was like, they didn't execute what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, was he like, was like, the plan wasn't to kick the ball out of the end zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was really stupid, man. Was, but this game and its loss doesn't fall on Josh Allen. Mm-mm. It falls on that defense that was so – uh, vaunted, yeah. so touted. Yeah. Terry, the Bills defense had three opportunities to end the game, and they fell short every time. Right? Yeah. The first drive that they had to end the game, uh, Tyree Kill caught the 64 yard touchdown and threw, threw up the deuces on the way by. Yep. The second time was the 13 second meltdown that led to overtime. Yep. And then in overtime, they didn't force a single incompletion. <laughs> As the Chiefs marched 75 yards down on eight plays. Was it eight plays? I thought it was just six. Not nah, eight plays, 75 yards, no incompletions. Terry, on those three drives, the Bills had 15 snaps. Yep. On those 15 plays, they allowed 13 yards per play. They forced the Chiefs to only have one attempt on third down longer than one yard. <laughs> hey, look. By the time overtime came, and I knew when the Chiefs got the ball, the shit was over. The Bills' defense looked absolutely exhausted. By the end of the game, it was over, bro. In overtime, I was like, you can see their fucking breath through their helmets. They're just like, fuck, just end our misery. We're done. And then that that back shoulder catch was so easy that Kelsey called for the touchdown. The linebacker never turned around. And the fact that you had a linebacker on Travis Kelsey in that situation, bro, the coaching is absolutely garbage. The Bills threw that game away. The defense fell apart. They threw that game Thanks. away, bro. And it, great book. and it also it must have been uh, on the book club for the Bills this year. It must have been some required team reading the way that defense played. <laughs> they played like shit. But your boy, how, how does Josh Allen not end up going to like fucking Florida State or like Clemson or Ohio State? Like he went to what school did he go to? Like North Dakota or some shit? Josh Allen, like, what college did he go to? How was how was someone no, that idea. big? He's fucking six six two hundred. It goes to like North Dakota State. Like, what the fuck? He must have been so bad. He must have been really uh, fucking bad. <laughs> hey, he was bad enough that the Giants passed on him twice in that draft, <laughs> so they could take Daniel Jones. Danny Jones. <laughs> the Jets passed on him so they could take Sam Darnold. Yeah. The, the Browns passed on him so they could take Baker Mayfield. Yeah. It, and the Colts pass on him so they could uh, – I don't even know who the fuck they took. But the Colts GM is the only motherfucker who still has a job out <laughs> of all those people who passed on him. Yeah, well, he drafted good players. They, I guess they didn't need a quarterback. They they went with Carson Wentz or whatever. But that man, Josh, is a beast, man. He is. But coming into this game, 
his receiving core was also a beast. Like, they just had the perfect game. Yeah. Stephon Diggs, you know, last year I think led the league in receiving. Yep. This year, yeah. you know, still playing as like a top five guy. Mm-hmm. Coming into this game, there are a lot of like talk. Like, who's better, Tyreek Hill or Stephon Diggs? Yeah. Who would you rather have in a big playoff game? Yep. Well, Tyreek Hill had game winning plays. Yeah, he did. He definitely did. Stephon Diggs ended the game with six target six targets for three catches for seven yards. That was it? Holy shit. Yeah, that boy Tyreek Hill had himself a game, dude. He had himself a fucking game. Damn, Stephon played like shit. That's crazy. But I mean, I guess the Chiefs scheme was maybe a little, you know, geared towards stopping him. But I guess so. Six targets, seven yards. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, yo, the, what you watch is what I told you. What did I tell you about Mahomes, bro? It's the best quarterback that, that we've ever seen in anybody's lifetime. I don't give a fuck about that Brady shit. I don't give a fuck about that Brady shit. What you saw it was crazy. The dude's a beast. Yeah. We'll talk a, l- a little bit later about the uh, best quarterback I've ever seen with my eyes. Or Thomas. But right now, we talk about still this game, talking about the Chiefs. Talk about Tyree Kill. Terry, let's talk about the peace sign that he threw up on that run. See it. After all the taunting penalties that we've seen this season get called, overturned touchdowns. I love it. Clear as day. Throws it up. No taunting call. I love it. Were you, you surprised by that? I was. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, because they had uh, – there was games decided by taunting calls this year. And that one was – I mean, if it's in the rule book, you got to call it, right? Yeah. And that was as clear and obvious as it could be. That one was. <laughs> it, should have, it should have not been a touchdown according to the rules of NFL football. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I guess they just decided not to ruin this game with that. If they would have thrown that flag, I would have thrown my phone because I was watching that shit. I was like, he threw up the peace sign on him? Don't throw the flag, please. And they didn't call it. I was like, cool. I'm glad because the refs ruined the like, last weekend. The refs ruined all those fucking games, dude. There's so many penalty oh. calls, like soft ass penalty calls that I've never seen. I'm just glad it, the ref didn't ruin this weekend for me, bro, because that was a fantastic game. Quarterbacks played their asses off. You know, defense, they did what they did, but it looked like they didn't want to play so, defense. So you're before. telling me you're happy the NFL refs did a poor job of enforcing the rules? Yeah. Hey, the refs, okay. the refs threw up the peace sign, too. They're like, hey, we ain't giving no flags. <laughs> dude, <are we> cool? <laughs> I loved it, bro. If they were I love it. Too. Like You're supposed to let the players dictate the outcome of games, not referees. Yeah. And so that's – you're just supposed to be there to make sure no one gets hurt and we follow the rules for the most part. Definitely. Like, you're not supposed to – I'm not even supposed to know your name. Like, <laughs> no, no. If you know – That's right. You have no idea who they are. Yep. No, you're right. <laughs> and so I'm happy that they, you know what I'm saying, kept, kept the finger guns in the pockets <laughs> and they just let him – I, I want to see, though, like, what do you think – they would have been like forced, like God damn, we have to call this, like yeah. the Marshawn Lynch nut grab as you fall backwards into the end zone. Do you think they would have had to call that one? <laughs> Maybe, dude. I don't know. It, 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 I guess it had to. It would have been really bad for them to have to throw it at that time. I mean, but that was your boy Tyreek is crazy. Somebody else with like a blockers running with him, going like this up the field. <laughs> Tyreek is crazy, man. To do that in that moment, bro, like, that's... Woo-hoo. Can you imagine being so fast that, like, you're being chased by 11 of the fastest guys in America, and you're not even away, and you're like, oh, I got this. Yeah. In the biggest, like, one of the biggest games of my career, I'm going to chuck this up knowing bro. that no one has even a chance of catching it's different. It's different speed, too, because the guy had the angle on him. And he yeah. was like... He put the deuces up when he wasn't clear yet. <laughs> Tyreek Hill was like, what, six yards behind the dude? He had the angle on him. And I'm like, oh, damn, he's like that? I mean, we know he's, he's fast as shit, though. He's, probably, he's, what, the fastest man in the world, you think, right now? Bro's fast as shit. Right? Think- I think he's probably the hardest man to catch what, what? in the world. I don't know if he's the fastest, but he's probably the hardest <laughs> to catch. <laughs> if he's running from somebody, he's way faster than if he's on the track. Oh, yeah. Well, isn't, isn't his 40 speed like 4 2 1 or something? Wasn't it like something crazy? Like his 40 is ridiculous. 
don't know. I, I thought that he was one of those guys that like plays just as fat in fast in pads as he does like in shorts and shit. Probably like I, mean, I don't remember his forty time being like blowing people right away like John Ross or anything like yeah. that. <clears throat> but then he got on the football field. It was like, oh, he's not any slower with all this shit on. Him. He's just as fat. No, so what I'm kind of getting out of this combo is that I feel like you were more impressed with Josh Allen than you were with Patrick Mahomes, bro. Well, I expected this from Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. I was waiting to see if Josh Allen could really elevate to this level, and he did. Because coming into this year, Josh Allen was the MVP betting favorite, but I was like, I don't know if I really see it. Yeah. I don't know if he's like a top five guy. Yeah. And I think he kind of answered those questions in this game, and he did impress me. That he did. I mean, what makes it tough for him and like a lot of those quarterbacks that live in that region of the country – Buffalo is just a really hard place to be, like, a great quarterback. Like, it, you're going to have some of those games where it's fucking six degrees and the snow's blowing down on your ass and you really can't throw the ball. Like, when they lost to the Patriots and shit. Like, Buffalo is just a hard place for a quarterback to put up big numbers. So, that, that's – like, when you look at his numbers, you're not going to look at his passing numbers and be like, oh, yeah, he's a definite MVP for his passing. It's just also his running. It's the combined things that he can do. Because if he, if he drops back in that shotgun and they – you. Do a QB draw every time. He's getting yards on it. I don't even understand why they even hand it off to a running back. Just fucking give it to Josh Allen and tell him to run. He juked the dude out of his pants. He hurt a guy on the other side. Oh, yeah, that shit was nasty, bro. <laughs> that, it was nasty. But th those hits add up, man. They do. And they, they're like, we'll rather have you take 100 of those a season instead of 300. No, no, I'm saying. I don't want him to do it. But, like, in those big situations, I feel like yeah, they need to do big it. Moment, they'll do it. But I think that's something that really impressed me about him in this game is that he wasn't doing that all game. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't doing the Josh Allen show until it was, like, fourth quarter. Yeah. He was he, he was like Chris Paul out there. Everyone else was eating. Everybody else was feeling involved. Then it came time, and he was like, all right, I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. And he did it. Terry, there are four examples in NFL history of a quarterback completing at least 70% of his passes Throwing for 300-plus yards and rushing for 50-plus yards at a playoff game. Three of those performances were produced by Josh Allen. Jesus Christ. One of them was yesterday. The other two were the years before that. Do you know who had the only other person to do it? What was it? You said 300 yards and 70%? And you got to rush for 50 yards, too, in a playoff game. The only person that... Maybe could do that, Russell Wilson. Who is it? Patrick Mahomes yesterday as well. Oh, shit. Damn, that boy Patty. Yeah. Yeah, man. He needs to use his leg. He said, he said Josh Allen, all that was cute. <laughs> but hold my beer. Because <laughs> I got 13 seconds left. And your point is coming right down the field. Yeah. Now that, that man is different, bro. See, like that, that's what <clears> – I feel like he should do it more. He doesn't run a lot. He doesn't run that often, so like, yeah. well, he's run for his life in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that that shit was unfair. I don't know what I was thinking betting on the fucking Chiefs, but we'll digress on that. They had five replacement linemen, and I'm like, yeah, the Chiefs are still gonna win. But besides the point, when he uses his legs, bro, it's it's different, man. And it's also like you can't do a QB spy on him, bro, because he's so lethal in the pocket. You have to use every single person you got out there for pass coverage because he's an absolute monster. My man is surgical, dude. The throws, he's got the best throwing motion. Like, he can do it from all angles, left hand, right hand. It doesn't even fucking matter, bro. He's, I'm telling you, bro, he's different. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen, bro. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I don't care. Accolades aside, oh, like, he's not the GOAT. You were talking about Josh Allen until this end. Oh, no. And I was like, no, not no. in my head. I was like, yeah, Caucasian Cam. He's nasty. Nah. <laughs> Josh runs a lot more than uh, other guys do, but he, he, he's yeah. really good, man. He's good, too, but Mahomes is the best guy I've ever seen. Like like you said, Josh Allen had a terrific game. He should have won that game. 13 seconds, nobody else does that shit. I feel like him and probably Brady could have done it, but that shit. You hear the Andy Reid quote that he said to uh, to Mahomes right before that drive? What did he say, that Grim Reaper shit? Yeah, when things look grim, be the Grim Reaper. But I'm like, I like shut the fuck up, Andy. I'm about to go. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been like, next time you go to Boss of Market, don't order four sides. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, that, that was a 
was a fantastic game. You want to transition to another fantastic game? Yeah, yeah uh, we'll transition to a, a two. I guess a game that that featured a, two different quarterbacks that could be in the market for new teams um, next year or whatever. Yeah. With well, actually, not two quarterbacks, rather, but two quarterbacks played this weekend who may be looking for two two different teams. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> You know what? You just do it. I'm, I, uh, I'm done. I'm clocking out. <laughs> Which game do you want to go to? You fucking blubber oh. mouth. This guy's <laughs> mouth is made out of pure blubber. <laughs> blub, 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 blub. Sound like Charles Barkley. Jesus Christ! I knew getting an IV in my tooth was a bad idea. <laughs> nice. Right, so you want to go to the Brady game? I'm not doing the Brady shit. Okay. I was thinking Brady Rogers. Both of them are gonna uh, retire. Look for new situations. They both. Left the arena without giving high fives to people with their head uh, hanging down. But we can go to Brady um, since you were talking about betting on a guy uh, who had a banged up offensive line. Yeah. And yeah. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. The Bucks. Kind of a similar story for Tom Brady today. The Bucks. Or yesterday. Do you think he's going to retire first off? You know, before we even start to talk about it, he's coming back? No. I think he's coming back. I don't think he can win with this team, though. I, I don't think they can win. Like, Yesterday, they got really lucky yesterday, bro. Like, Cam Akers fumbled the shit towards the end. Well, let, let's talk about what happened. The Bucks were getting their shit ran through. The Rams were killing them. The score, what was it? What did, like, 27 to 3? Yeah, like, it was 27 to 3. Man, I, I was hoping it would be 29 to 3 <laughs> so we could stop talking about the Falcons in the biggest playoff comeback ever. I was like, God damn, if Tom Brady could pull this off, and then we'll forget about the Falcons forever. But no, it was only 27. Nah, baby. We never going to forget about that choke job. And you had a dude talking shit in your house right to your fucking face. <laughs> but that's besides the point. You just assume Jamil's jealous. <laughs> but yeah, that's besides the point. The Rams are killing them, dude. I don't... <clears throat> like, everybody... I love Skip Bayless, bro. I fucking love Skip Bayless. But I was watching them this morning. I'm like, bro... It wasn't like this all great comeback and all this type of shit. It was just a whole bunch of bullshit. The Bucks got lucky as fuck. The Rams turned the ball over twice. On like the dude Cam Cam Akers just ran it regularly, like just regular as fuck down the middle and just fumbles it. Like how, when does that ever happen? My man has gotten to get the fuck out of here. The Rams need a new running back because that shit was ridiculous. You can't fumble there. Not at that point in the game, bro. You can't fumble at that point to close him out, my guy. He gives Brady a short field because Brady wasn't playing great. But you got to think about so, it. So this wasn't a great comeback for you? No. Oh, Brady's comeback? Hell no. It was – they, like, handed it over to him when he got the ball. The second fucking greatest comeback in playoff history. They were, bro, two touchdowns he got. They got the ball at the fucking 20, and then they got the ball at half field, and they scored two touchdowns. Congratulations. They couldn't drive up the field to save their lives. It's called complimentary football, Terry. Fuck the best here. team to play it. Nah, if he look, look. Hey, Siri, uh, name me the comeback of the twenty plus point comeback in which the offense and defense didn't help each other. How are you going to come back twenty points if the defense lets them go all the way down the field and score? Hey, that Falcons drive. You got to get turnovers. That Falcons drive. I'm telling you, when Brady was against the Falcons, they had one short field, right? Wasn't it just one time where y'all like fumbled it or some shit, or was it interception? <laughs> It was just one turnover in that Super Bowl, right? Other than that, they drove on y'all. They just drove on y'all straight up. Did they not? They just drove it right down your fucking throat every time. We got the fumble. We Matt Ryan was taking fifteen yard sacks into his own half <laughs> on fourth down. Hey, come on, I listen, man. I don't want to relitigate that game. I do want to talk about this one though because I knew the whole time that Tom Brady was going to come back, and I thought he was going to win this for game. a year. Out of here, I was. I was watching it with T with James. I was like. It was 27 to 3. I was like, Tom Brady is going to win this game. I was like, they're coming back. Book it. I never thought for a Book second. It. I didn't think. And the Rams, to the Rams' credit, they tried to give the game away all fourth quarter. They did. The, the three fumbles, and then they snap it over yeah. uh, his head. Yeah. Tom Brady, they, he finally gets strip sacked by Vaughn Miller. The next play, they snap it over Matthew Stafford's head See, that, that's, and get it right back. That's the shit I was talking about, though. Like, they're about to fucking score, and then they get lucky as shit like that. Top Brady always gets that bullshit luck. But what, what makes this one – it is great in a way, though, because he only had Mike Evans. And shout-out to Mike Evans for burning Jalen Ramsey. 
not, you know, Jalen Ramsey get all this hype and got his shit just toasted for that one touchdown. So they only had Mike Evans, and they were double teaming Gronk like every single fucking play. It just made it really tough for them to score. But when you give yep. those short fields, it's a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier, but it is a lot easier. You still got to score the points though against a team that you know the Tom Brady and the Bucks got a banged up offensive line, yeah. and you're playing against Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, and Von Miller. Yeah, but no, Brady not a great time to be banged up. And it's not exactly like Tom Brady is the most mobile guy <laughs> that's going to be out you here gotta, evading. Them but you got to give Brady credit for his pocket shit, though, because he usually, when you have great DNs on the other side, that shit really doesn't matter. He's good at, like, maneuvering around that. But what fucks him up is when you have a great D tackle coming right down the middle. He can't step up. Yeah, he can't step up and get away from that pressure. Like, he's a beast at that. You'll never, you rarely can sack him with a DN just coming right around the corner. Like, he's always like, oh, see you later, buddy. Step up, throw. But Donald getting that pressure, that's what made it kind of hard. <sighs> I got to give him some credit yeah. for coming back, but it wasn't like the best comeback I've seen. This, this is what I'll say, Terry. What I did expect was that Brady was going to come back and tie the game up. Yeah. Um, and But I thought they were going to win in overtime. What I never expected was that after the Rams tried to give the game away all fourth quarter, <laughs> it was going to be Tampa Bay who gave them the game. Yeah. After Tom Brady comes and ties the game up, drives them all the way down, erasing a 24-point deficit, Tampa Bay's defense had 42 seconds to prevent a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Not a field goal, a touchdown, Terry. Yeah. They left Cooper Cup wide open for a 50-yard bomb to the ceiling. The, the best fucking receiver in the game. That shit was... Cooper Cup led the NFL in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. And in the most important play of the game, he goes uncovered. So what do you think about that play call, right? So the Bucks in that moment, it kind of looked like they did, what, like a zero blitz? That's what it looked like. They just went all out there. Like, all right. So they called, yeah. it, they called it a zero blitz, but two of the guys uh, didn't get the right call. Yeah. So eight or nine guys on the field were running zero blitz. Two other guys didn't know what the fuck they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Next thing you know, yeah, Cooper Cup is the greatest wide receiver in NFL history. <laughs> yeah, what, so what happened? It was like a helmet miscommunication or some shit? Like they didn't hear the play call? What the fuck? I heard about the, it. Yeah, the mic didn't do a good enough job relaying the call to all his teammates. Damn, son. That's hilarious. Yep. You know what's funny? That was like, I think – the second game all season where all the starters actually played in the game together. And you got yeah. and you got fucked. They scored 30 yeah. on you, dog. Fucking well, Terry, defense. It's in, in these type of moments that home field advantage matters. You know, in crucial seconds, you're scrambling, playing uh, away in a stadium that's loud as fuck, can't get your communication right, your teammates can't hear the signals, and then next thing you know, Cooper Cup is wide the fuck open over the top. That game was in Tampa, right? Oh, you're right. It was in Tampa. Yeah, the game was in Tampa, bro. Well, <laughs> Terry, that's the thing about home field advantage is it counts until it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, get this guy the fuck out of here, man. This guy, you always give me one good one each week. Every week, you, I'm like, did he watch the game? Misinformed. <laughs> <laughs> now it was almost as bad as fucking last week when you were like, "Yeah, they blew the whistle in the last play call of the game, and they scored that touchdown." <laughs> I was like, "Bro, what are you talking about right now?" But yeah. My brain, Terry, it only has space for the absolutely necessary detail. Okay, <laughs> and anything that happens to be on the periphery that isn't paramount to telling this story. Is going to get pushed aside somewhere. No, I get it. Did I remember that Cooper Cup was wide open? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, that, that, what do you, what do you, what do you think about that play call though? Like a straight zero blitz in a situation like that. I mean, I, and that wasn't the primary receiver because he just ran straight up. Like he wasn't actually wanting to get the ball. He was looking for like a, one of those crosses yeah. because he was trying to get it out quick. But I don't know. I, <laughs> Was he doing his best Rex Ryan impression? <laughs> <laughs> it's retarded. 
Uh, that's how the we beat the Eagles last year. It was like the last play of the game. We're like, oh, zero blitz. We're going to throw a bubble screen, and Julio's going to take this to the house. Like, it's just so easy to beat a zero blitz. You just have to make a quick decision. And that was my boy Todd Bowles, man. He's a really good coach, too. He deserves to be a head coach and everything. But yeah. that, and, that- and Matthew Stafford uh, this season, number one rating passer in the NFL against the Blitz. Hey, Matt Staff. That's a hell of a trade, man. If it all works out and the Rams win the Super Bowl, then, you know, good on them for getting rid of uh, Jared Goff and all those picks. But they need to because they're not getting no young talent in there. Oh. They, you know, they traded all these picks yeah. for Aaron, or, excuse me, Jalen Ramsey, Matthew Stafford, Odell Beckham. Who else did they trade picks for on their roster? They got Von Miller. They traded some picks for Von them. Miller. Yeah. But, but the thing, the so. thing for them, and shout out to Matt Stafford, bro. That was his 43rd game winning drive. 40 fucking three, bro. Since 2009. The most by anybody since he got into the league. Beast. Really? Yeah. Playing in Detroit, bro. Everybody's yeah, a lot of game winning drives when you're losing all games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not that. See, that game was like, I don't know. Like when I was watching, I was just like, they're going to lose. I never thought that they were going to come back. I, I may have missed most of it because I didn't watch the second half like that. Because I was just like, this shit's hey, over. Did you did you catch this one? The the one um, where Tom Brady he had a forced down deep throw to to Mike Evans. That's all. It was like on a five yard line. You're the helmet to helmet joint with Eric Weddle. What happened? The he dropped a pass and Eric Weddle came and just cleans him up helmet to helmet on fourth down. What? And so they call uh they call a personal foul. Um, for whatever it is, like the uh, the head hunting enforcement, like conduct penalty so 15, for targeting a fifteen yarder. Yeah, shit. But they determined that he did it after Mike Evans dropped the ball, so the possession had already changed. Ooh. So they did not get a first down. It just backed the Rams up fifteen yards. Damn, son. So they did they end up punting it or did they go for it again? No, that was fourth down. Oh, so they said that's it. That was it. Yeah, they, they said that was it, and that that was a game changing play. Your boy Brady's always a part of some game where some uncalled bullshit happens, like <laughs> something <laughs> weird happens, and Brady's always in it. It's either Spy Gate stealing plays, or Deflate Gate, or yeah. uh, Targeting Gate. <laughs> yeah, There's so many fucking games with this guy, man. But yeah, I mean. Stafford and the Rams, they're looking deadly, though, man. That offense is looking really good. But I will say for a majority of that third and fourth quarter, they were choking that shit away, man. They were choking that shit away. But shout out to Odell Beckham, too. You know, he wasn't a problem in Cleveland. Yeah, so it was clearly clearly Baker Mayfield. Yeah. <laughs> I think at this point, everyone can take a step back yeah. and realize that Skip Bayless and Baker Mayfield are the only two people. <laughs> Who think that it was uh, Odell Beckham's part? Yeah, I never thought it was Odell Beckham's part. He's good. He's a fucking hard-working <laughs> kid, man. He's, he's he's look, all receivers are going to be divas, man. They want the fucking ball. Like, it is what it is. That's not that big a deal to me. He's a great player, bro. He's 40. Yeah. How tall is he? Like 5'10"? Probably yeah, six feet, something like that. I don't know. I mean, bro, did you see that? Honestly, he's like your build. He's like your size. Yeah, he's, not that, he's not that big. He's great, man. If he would have torn his ACL, he'd still be really fucking good. But that that game was a, that was a good game. Your boy Brady almost uh, came back. Do you like Tom Brady? No. You fucking hate him? I don't hate him. I just don't like him. I think it's weird how he makes out with his children. <laughs> that, yeah, that is a little. That is a little. I watched the video again yesterday, man. Oh, why? What the fuck? Because T and James didn't believe me. They're like, no, 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 no. I was like, guys, he did it on camera. <laughs> it gets worse every time you watch it. He asked it, his son asked to check his fantasy football lineup, and Tom Brady laying half naked on the massage table goes, well, what are you, what are you going to do for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is weird. It is weird. Then his son comes over there, and he goes, everything comes at the cost. <laughs> Then kiss him on the mouth, and he goes, "Hey, that was just a peck. Bring that ass back!" <laughs> <laughs> and makes out with his son for three seconds. So any guy who does that, Terry, I can't be a big fan. 
<laughs> That's your goat. I don't know if he is the right word to describe it, but he definitely creeps me the fuck out. <laughs> hey, that's y'all's goat. That's y'all's goat right there. I'm, I'm on the homeboy uh, train. But, hey, so that game was a good one. Let's go ahead and transition hey. to the next joint. Yes, sir. You want to go Packers and, uh, or you want to talk about the, yeah, yeah. the Bengals? We got to go, gotta go Packers. All right, let's go right? Packers. From talking for about one goat to the guy who'll probably win MVP this year. He's going to win it. If he if they didn't already give it to him, I think. Did they already give him the awards? I thought they already gave him the awards. No, nah, they didn't do it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so your boy Rodgers, man. See, this is what I hate about fucking Green Bay and all this bullshit everybody keeps talking about. And I picked Green Bay to win. I thought they were going to win. But, you know, when you get that bye week, everybody keeps saying that shit. Everything's a little off when, you, you know, you come back the next week. Not playing, and the other team's hot. The 49ers defense is looking fucking good, son. Except for the first fucking drive of the game, they scoring them so easy. Like, it was like a seven or eight play drive, touchdown like it was nothing. Then for the rest of the fucking game, you can't score. What the fuck's going nope. on, bro? And then it started snowing, like, around, like, halftime and shit. I thought, I thought Aaron Rodgers just looked really cavalier all game. It all just looked to me that he always thought that he had, like, ah, we'll, we'll get it next play. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so confident that I'll do it next play. And then it was just next play, next play, next play. We're out of place. The game's over. Yeah. No, that's true. It, he he just didn't ever look like he had a sense of urgency throughout the entire game. No. Like, unflustered to the point where it's like, you should be a little flustered right now. Like, this is important. <laughs> like, why are you so fucking chill right now? That's your boy, man. How the fuck? Like, the 49ers defense is really good. So I get why, you know, they're in the championship game. But Garoppolo went, he completed 11 passes. He didn't throw a touchdown pass. He threw a fucking interception like he always does. He always throws a pick. And it's not, they weren't even, like, running it crazy. And Terry, he could have thrown four more. (laughs) Every pass that he threw that wasn't down the middle of the field could have been a pick six. Yeah. And Troy Aikman was like barely able to contain himself on the broadcast. <laughs> like he, he's like, ah, another dangerous one from Jimmy G. Very fortunate that he didn't turn his head around. That could have been six going the other way. That's what he said the first time. Yeah. But a fourth time, he's like, you just can't do stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not, Jimmy G is oh my god, dude! What the fuck was Bill Belichick thinking? What the hell was he even thinking for a, a second that he was like, "Yeah, this is the guy. This is the replacement for my boy Brady." I'm just happy that Tom Brady didn't win because I had I was like, "This is gonna be the most boring game between the Bucks and the 49ers <laughs> that nobody gives a fuck about." It's like I was working so hard to try to create a compelling narrative, and I wrote down all this stuff about. Tom Brady being Will Smith and Jimmy G being August Alcina. <laughs> <laughs> Not a, this long, elaborate thing, and I'm so happy I don't have to use that. It. Would, that would have been good. That would have been good. But no, but this, this is this is what my rant was going to be. I'm tired of Green Bay, bro. Why do they have a fucking football team? You could clearly tell that the fucking receivers' hands were so cold they couldn't catch shit. Like, Kittle was dropping passes. I saw Devontae Adam drop a pass. He, he made some great catches, though. But I was like, damn, it's got to be stupid cold out there. These motherfuckers can't catch shit. Because a lot of the times they're throwing it straight to the guys, and they just couldn't catch it, bro. And I had to sit well, there and watch that bullshit the whole fucking game. That's why the Packers needed to run more. They couldn't move the ball after that first drive. I was like, well, old dude got hurt. They're big running back. I forget his name. Yeah, I don't remember that guy's um, name. They just had Aaron Jones. And Aaron but- Jones is- Good. Aaron Rodgers, he he had tunnel vision, man. He had, he threw twenty six passes all game. Twenty one of them were to Aaron Jones or to Devontae. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, it's fucking cold, man. They need a dome. This shit's bullshit. This is what happens though every fucking year with these guys. With Buffalo, same shit. If you don't have a run game, you're not gonna win at the end of the, when it's winning time, bro. In the playoffs in January and February, you got to be able to run yeah. the ball. More, not just running the ball, but you got to be complete in all three phases. And Terry, when I picked the Packers, uh, you know, to to go to the Super Bowl when we did our picks last week, I talked about you know they could run the ball, they could pass the ball, and they could play defense. Mm-hmm. I said they could they could run the ball, they could pass the ball, they could stop the run, and they could stop the pass. They could rush the pitch. Yeah. 
What I didn't account for it was special teams. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that one. Three phases, yeah. and I only accounted for two of them. Yeah. And so did Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. The 49ers special team, they, they blocked a punt and returned it for a touchdown. They blocked a field goal right before halftime yep. to give them all the momentum. Yep. Special teams were the – that's what flipped the game, and that's what, what made the difference between two teams that looked unwilling to score at any point over four quarters. Nah, that's true, man, because it, it was only one touchdown the whole game, right? Or one yep. offensive touchdown. <laughs> yep, one offensive touchdown the whole game. Just the fucking Packers. And – Yep. It's sad, bro. If the Packers lose in a game where the other team scores 13 points, bro, you, that's your ass MVP, bro. That's your smug ass MVP. Is this your thing? <laughs> is your thing? I hate this dude, man. I hate Rodgers is good, man, but he always does this shit. He's got that one fucking Super Bowl. And they weren't even the, the one seed, right? I think they were like a six seed. You know what That's a great point, Terry, that you brought up back that like back in that year's. When I remember that Super Bowl year that Aaron Rodgers had, and, and he ran over us in the playoffs, yeah. absolutely steamrolled us. What I remember about Aaron Rodgers in that time is whoever was your, like, fourth or fifth corner would absolutely get destroyed. Mm-hmm. they go five wide receivers out, and if you didn't have five corners that could cover for three seconds, that last dude – was going to get toasted. Yeah. It didn't matter wherever you moved him around to, Aaron Rodgers was going to find him, and he was going to toast him. And so there was nowhere to hide on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. The 49ers have got awful corners. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't cover their mouth while sneezing in a pandemic. And they're out here blanking it. Devontae Adams is double covered all game. Yep. It still gets 95% of all the targets. All these other guys are in one-on-one coverage against the 49ers' third and fourth corners. who Their number one quarter isn't worth a shit. (laughs) Never mind their third and fourth one. And he doesn't even test them. No. I mean. I couldn't believe it, man. Nobody else. Only two guys caught the passes. You were right. It was two other guys got uh, a pass. One reception. Mercedes Lewis got that one reception that he fucking fumbled it. <laughs> and then the other guy was Lazard caught a pass for six yards, and that was it. Yeah. That shit's crazy, bro. I'm telling you, bro, I'm sick of Green Bay. Green Bay can go fuck themselves. I'm, I'm done with them. And you know why? Has anyone else noticed that Jimmy G can't throw anywhere but in the middle yeah. down the hash? He's like, like a rookie quarterback. That's what he. That's all he can do. It's fucking crazy. How is he this far? Like, how did Green Bay allow him to, like, run the opposite coverage of what the Bills are doing? Just guard the middle of the field, leave the sideline wide open. Because Jimmy G is going to throw you a pick six if he throws ten passes to the boundary. Yeah. He will. Well, this is what makes Kyle Shanahan great, though, bro. The ability to use Debo Samuel and, like, change up the way that they do passes and runs and stuff like that. Like, he, Debo and Mitchell won them the game because every it seemed like every time they ran the ball, they were getting five yards. Yeah, they were getting five absolutely. and five. Which was but also, he, he was aggressive when he had to be. Mm-hmm. Like, on that final drive, he put the ball in Garoppolo's hands, and he's like, you've got to make a play. Yeah. And they had those two big passes, and then on that third and seven – um, the Packers came out in uh, their like nickel formation with an extra defensive back because yeah. Jimmy G had been passing it, and they go back to the run, run it for nine yards on third and seven to win the game. Yeah, I mean, 49ers defense just did their thing, man. They, the Packers just couldn't do anything for the, the whole game, dude. I mean, what they just need one receiver. The Packers just need one receiver, bro. <laughs> like, I know it's bad when Mercedes Lewis is still fucking playing. Like, how long has he been in the league? Like 42 years old. Yeah, bro, see, like, and the crazy thing is he's still a great blocker. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess that's what's keeping him in the game. He catches one pass and fumbles it. I guess, hey, do your job, brother. Just block. Yeah. But I don't want to needle Aaron Rodgers too much for not taking shots. He played bad. Even though he didn't take a shot, he just got immunized, and that's what probably led to all this. <laughs> he, he played not uh, bad, bro, but he does this. You know, Terry, it's coming out. Uh, this is actually breaking news. This just in. What? Um, it, it turns out 
Aaron Rodgers did his own research, and it turns out the Green Bay Packers ended up winning <laughs> over the 49ers, straight from Aaron Rodgers himself. <laughs> he did his own research. He didn't follow along like the rest of the sheep will, you know, turn into the two. He consulted with experts, and, uh, you know, he came to a different conclusion. Cool. All right. Good job, buddy. That's great job, Aaron. <laughs> but uh, that that was probably – that was – that's a different style of football that we saw. It was still a good game, but it, it, it's not one of those games what of what like the NFL would want the, the game to be, like a high-scoring game. It, it was a good defensive football game. Like It was cold-weather game, windy as hell. Special teams was the thing that got it, and 49ers got that crucial last block when they scored a touchdown off it. Terry, what's the, what's the lasting image of this game that's going to stay with you? Aaron. What's going to be the one thing you remember? Honestly, just Aaron Rodgers with his hands in his pockets on the sidelines. Like, damn, I lost another one. It's a big. You know, what? lost another big one, bro. With a yeah. really good team, like a great yeah. team, and, and they couldn't get it done, man. It's unfortunate for your boy, man. Well, resume is looking more and more like Peyton Manning's before he joined the Broncos. Yeah, it, it's starting to get bad, man. But mm-hmm. they need another receiver and another run. Like they drafted Jordan Love. It's like they really didn't want Aaron Rodgers to succeed, and he, like, persevered through it. And then when they get to this situation, he had nothing. Well, I hope he goes to the Packers, or Matt Ryan goes to the Packers and somebody. (laughs) Or, excuse me, to the Steelers. Get the fuck out of the NFC. Well, apparently he said if he leaves Green Bay, he's going to retire. He's like, I don't want to leave. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he changed his mind more than – Yeah. You also told us you were uh, you got the shot and we're back. So <laughs> excuse me if I take that with a uh, grain of salt. Aaron. Yeah, he changes his mind a little bit too much for me. But hey. the, the image that reside with me, Terry, and this runs uh, counterintuitive to what he just said about wanting to stay in Green Bay, yeah. was yeah. The him walking down that tunnel, like you said, with his hands in his hand warmer and his pockets in front of him, with the young Packers fans with their arms out trying to give him a high five and him just walking past them, not engaging. And that one young Packers fan who had his arm out for him, Aaron Rodgers walked right past him and the arm changed to a point in his back. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like how quickly being snubbed by your favorite athlete can change things. And if that's how he leaves Green Bay, if this is like the last memory of him snubbing the fans yeah. and being selfish, and it wasn't like when Tom Brady lost and everything is all like you couldn't have tell you didn't know where Tom Brady was apart from the coaches. Ever he was in the mesh of the team. Yeah, yeah. Like the Bucks lost. Yeah, yeah. Not Tom Brady. I got you. Aaron Rodgers was all by himself mm-hmm. making that solo walk. All about him, not making eye contact, not giving high fives, and that's what I'll I'll remember from this game. Okay, I got you, my man. He, he's smug as hell. He's a smug ass dude. So let's move on to some. I like, I like Aaron Rodgers. I really do. He's a really good football player, bro. He's one of yeah. the best quarterbacks we've seen. But like, and I love arrogant motherfuckers. I, I really do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, what what corner do we put him in, bro? Like, he's got one Super Bowl win, and. Pretty much that's about all he's got, bro. Just that one playoff time when they they were a wild card team and they went to the Super Bowl and won, beat the Steelers. But, I mean, besides that, I mean, regular season is great. Is he on that Peyton Manning type of shit? No. I mean, if, is he even on Joe Burrow's level, Terry? Let's really get into it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the Titans played the Bengals. That was the last game of this wild card weekend. My guy, Big Dick Burrow, or as his uh, parents call him, Joe. <laughs> he led the Bengals to uh, to win the game, became the first quarterback in playoff history to get sacked nine times and still win the game. He still passed for 350 yards despite getting sacked nine times. That's crazy, bro. Not Getting sacked nine fucking times and still winning? Like, I bet he's the only person who's ever done that in the history of football. Yeah. It's got to be. He is. Yeah. He is. That, that's what they said. He was the first person to ever win a playoff game and get sacked nine times. It had to be. I mean, if he gets sacked nine times, he probably lost by 50. The only person to ever win a game and get sacked eight times was Donovan McNabb. Jesus Christ. That's surprising because McNabb wasn't that good. That was before he blew his knee out. Who, Big Burrow or McNabb? McNabb. I didn't even remember McNabb blew his knee out. He's so garbage to me. 
My, my <laughs> lasting image of Donovan McNabb is him grounding passes. He always yes. throws it into the dirt on a fucking yeah. cross route. I'm like, bro, hit him in the hands, man. What the hell? But yeah. Oh, shit. It was uh, the Titans, right? Bengals beat the Titans. Yes. Yeah. Were we surprised? Everybody keeps saying this is big ass upset. I wasn't. Me and you. I called it. I picked it. I picked Joe Burrow. The Titans are frauds, bro. Get them out of here. Fraudulent. Hey, what did we say about Ryan Tannehill? Not clutch. Both of us said it. Both of us. Yeah. Not clutch. He's all right, but he's not real. Mm -mm. What is he, top 12? He's on the outside looking in, right? Top 18. Ooh. He's pushing back. Hey, what's his signature playoff game, Terry? He's got none. He's got none. You'll be waiting for the rest of his career for that, buddy. (laughs) And look, to me, I'm not going to say Tannehill is in the same eye as uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's it's a little bit closer than he is to, like, the top tier. I'm just saying. I think that's not a bad comp. (laughs) Like – He's a little better than Garoppolo, but he's not a lot better. Yeah. He just, he has a big arm, so he can make good throws. He just – he has the best running back in the league, and he has two really good receivers. Elite. Like, he has two elite receivers. Yes. Good job, buddy. And they got a good old line. Like, if they had a real quarterback, they could – the Titans are set up to be the best team in the NFL. They just got Harden. Ryan Tannehill. Like if you well, let's talk about Ryan Tano and how he's set up to be their quarterback of the future, Terry. Next year, next season, from this season to next season, Tano's cap hit is going to jump from eleven million to thirty nine million. Jesus Christ! For somebody, so he hasn't even started to get expensive. From now on, Ryan Tannehill, you're going to be paying a premium hmm. to have Ryan Tannehill on your team. And he threw three interceptions and one touchdown in a fucking yep. playoff game. Cutting him before June first would mean fifty eight million dollars in dead money this upcoming season. Damn, bro. I mean, he's not bad enough to cut, but he's definitely on that vein of like, damn. He's the only thing holding this team back. <laughs> the whole rest of the team is good as shit. Yeah. Except for Ryan Tannehill. Well, I mean, at this point, at this point now, when you go into the game, the game plan is look, we're putting nine in the box, and if you can beat me, you can beat me. But it, we don't think you can. And they showed that he can't. He only threw it 24 times. The team doesn't even trust him. Because yeah. fucking Henry couldn't get off the whole game. They were stuffing him. I, I got to give credit to the Bengals defense, too, They're which good. has been a under under talked about storyline, you know, this postseason and everything. That Bengals defense, they were getting after Tannehill, but they held Derrick Henry to 62 yards on 20 carries. Yeah. No, they were stuffing him. That's all I'm saying. And the, the fact that he – ran it that many times and they didn't get nothing and they still didn't want to throw it. That just goes to show that you need a different quarterback, man. At the end of the game, you need some. You know, it's going to be tough when you got $60 million invested in this guy for the next two seasons. Yeah, and it, it only looks worse because I don't think Julio can complete a fucking season anymore, man. I really just don't. And AJ Brown, I mean, AJ Brown, I, I did say he's elite, but <laughs> Dude, that catch that he fucking made, that back shoulder one-handed joint. AJ or Julio? AJ. AJ was nice so disgusting. Oh, my God. Did you watch the game? Did you watch the Bengals Titans game? I watched the end. Oh, dude. AJ Brown had this uncoverable joint. Really? Where it's like, there's nothing. you If you're the DB, like, there's nothing you could have done better. Plot him. He, like, turned around this way and then turned the other way and looked for the ball and caught it with one hand, like, by his pocket without barely seeing it at all. <laughs> I was like, all right. Jesus Christ. Congratulations to you, sir. That's a hell of a fucking touchdown. Yeah. So who, who, who are we giving this credit to? Are we giving credit to Joe Burrow? Because he didn't. Come on, man. He didn't. Th- Come on, man. He's done it all year. He's done it all year, Terry. He led the NFL in expected points added per pass attempt. He led the NFL in yards per attempt. He led the NFL in adjusted yards per attempt. And he led the NFL in completion percentage this season. This is nothing new for Joe Burrow. This is... Ever since he got out of Ohio State, he's been doing this. I told you he was going to do Throw this. Throw the guns up. What you got to do is give him some fucking time, man. <laughs> if you can just keep Joe Burrow off his ass, he'll win you a fucking Super Bowl. Yeah, because they made it real tough for him to win that game. My God, dude. He he was getting suffocated, bro. No time, no time. But that final drive, he finally got time for one play. Yep. T. Higgins out. Took about two seconds off the clock. 
game winner. Yes, sir. I mean, no, but like Joe Burrow got sacked nine times. Ryan Tannehill, you suck. You absolutely <laughs> suck, bro. The other dude barely had any time. He still threw for more yards than you did. He had less yeah. interceptions than you after getting sacked nine times. And his interception went off the hands of his receiver. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, bro. He hit the dude right in the hands. It, it's, it's crazy, bro. Like, if they can finally get some time for him, it's so – these AFC teams are scary, bro. These AFC teams are so good, man. Man, if they just get a line, that Bengals team got weapons, man. They do, bro. Nixon, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, <laughs> Jamar Chase. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Uh, I mean, it, let me ask you a question, man. Is Joe Burrow and Jamar T- Chase the best rookie sophomore duo since Peyton Manning and Marshall Falk? Marshall Falk? Ooh. Uh, probably. Probably. I can't think of anybody else that's like – Pops out. Came in the league at back-to-back years. Yeah. Rookie sophomores taking over the league. Yeah. Shit, if Randy Moss could have had any quarterback, they would have been straight. But, uh, I, 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 yeah, probably. There's nobody else. Saquon Barkley never had a good quarterback. Marshall Falk before. Or took, or took over the league. <laughs> <laughs> or even rushed for like a 1,000 yards, I think. His rookie season, I think he got like 1,400 or something like that. Did he? Yeah. That's impressive. And then he tore his ACL. So, but not as impressive as Big Dick Burrow. Nothing's more impressive. Prince Paul and Joe. Nothing's more impressive than that, bro. What, he was the first pick, right? Was he number one? Yeah. Bengals were absolute trash. They were a trash can. And now they're hey. in the AFC championship game, dude. That's a Terry, huge turnaround, bro. I want you to look at me. All right? Put this goddamn camera on me. Where's my camera? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Terry, when you said earlier that the best quarterback that you've seen play is Patrick Mahomes. Go ahead. The, the best quarterback that I've seen with these eyeballs. You're crazy. His name is Joe You're Burrow. You're fucking crazy. Jesus, what is wrong with you, man? No, I'm not talking nope. body of work. I'm not talking body of work. No. I'm talking about I see this dude. He's good. He's the best. He's the best I've seen. He is like – I have more confidence in him if you just dropped him and put him in any situation that he'd do this. Like, you could put Joe Burrow on any of these other teams and they'd win in advance to the fucking playoffs. Or or to the uh, any of these other playoff teams, like swap Joe Burrow out for any of their other quarterbacks and they're winning the Super Bowl. No, I, I get what you're saying, Blubber Mouth. I understand what you're saying. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will give you this, though. I will give you this. If that were Tom Brady getting sacked nine times, your boy would have folded. He would have folded like a goddamn chair and said, hey, we lost this one, boys, because I, I can't do it. You guys are Dude, he has, he has like that mental fortitude, like a Brady, where, where that I know that I'm going to come back and win this game no matter what the situation is. Yeah. He has that. But he also has like the – Iron Man toughness of like a Dante Culpepper or Steve McNair, yeah. where he's like, I'll pick my ass from getting planted on the ground 20 times a game and be ready for the next joint. Yeah. I mean, the, watching that shit, I was like, it was honestly the only thing I could compare it to was like Iverson or like Dwayne Wade. Like the way they just fucking just kept getting fouled and knocked down to the ground and they're just like, oh, fuck it. Whatever. Next play. Like Joe Burrow just getting up after getting sacked, like, hey, man, whatever. Let's keep going. Yeah. You remind me of Tyson Fury after <laughs> <laughs> old dude sat his ass down and he got up like an undertaker. Yeah, I'd say Wilder. Yeah, nah, man. Joe Burrow was looking cr- like he is good, man. But you know what? Let's not let's not do Tyson Fury. Let's pay respect to the goat Joe Burrow <laughs> and give you the goat conversation, uh, the goat comparison. He was Muhammad Ali, Terry. He rope a doped the Titans. He let them tire themselves out, sacking him nine times. <laughs> And then when they ran out of energy, he marched down the field. <laughs> Just taking him like Ali. Take him. Get him in the car. Yeah. Knock him out. Yeah. Nah, I love it, bro. Bro, he's a beast, bro. He's a fucking beast. He still threw for 300 yards, bro, in a game where you get sacked nine times. But you got 350. 350. Like you're saying, though, you do give credit to those receivers, too, because those receivers are really, really good. Because if without elite receivers like he has, you get mm-hmm. no separation, he could have got sacked 15 times, bro. 
I'm, I'm, he could have got sacked like 15 times in that game. Tannehill, you're garbage. Heaven forbid they throw a fucking screen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, your boy Burrow's working with the worst players, uh, worst coaches. And he's doing it on like uh, knee braced up, one year re- recovered from ACL surgery and shit. Yeah. Like, well, do, do you remember him before he tore his ACL? Or fuck yeah. Did? Okay. Did you like him a lot? Or were we? Yes. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was all over Joe. Yeah, Burrow. I didn't know you knew much about him, but the, the kid was a beast. I knew he was going to be really good. I didn't, and when he tore his ACL, I was like, damn, that sucks. But he's coming back and he's really fucking good. Like Carson Wentz looked fantastic. He tore his ACL and he looks like shit now. He looks horrible. Joe Burrow looks better. I didn't say that. He does look really good. He He's still not even peaked up yet. He's still not even running like that no. with the football, but he can. Like, he's he can scoot. Yeah. Next year, he's going to be even better. But so you're telling me. this is the, I'm taking Joe. I'm taking this Joe. This is the best quarterback you've seen with your eyes? My better eyes. Better than Mahomes? I know it's too early. I know it's all the shit. I, if, I would be more afraid playing Joe Burrow than anyone else. Better than Mahomes? Yeah. That's right. Because look at what he has. Mahomes came into a situation where he was drafted, like, they traded up from, like, 25 to 16 uh, to pick yeah, him. Yeah. He was on a the, – you know, the team had been to the playoffs the year before with Alex Smith. Mm-hmm. They went to the playoffs his rookie season where he didn't play the whole season, and then he took over a team that was already good. The Bengals were the worst team in the league. They That's why they got the number one pick. Before Joe Burrow got there, they had won like six games in fucking four seasons. Yeah. And overnight, they're in the AFC Championship. Now you're right. I mean, swap for swap. They're really fucking good. They are good. But. Hey, I like to get out a little ahead of things like your boy Max Kellerman. <laughs> right? Remember when he starts saying that Steph Curry was better than LeBron? Oh, <laughs> During Steph's MVP season? Bro. Hold on. This I, may be a Steph Curry is better than LeBron Jordan, nah, nah, nah. but I don't care. I'm feeling the heat check, Terry. I'm riding high. My predictions have all been working themselves out, right? I'm, I'm looking more and more like an NFL savant, okay? I'm a, I'm a ride with a hot hand. I'm on a heater. I'm throwing up a heat check. Joe Burrow, the, he's the GOAT. Mahomes is just a beast, man. It's going to be a really good matchup, though. But I, I, I give him credit. Give the kicker credit, too. That kicker's a fucking stone-cold monster beast. McPherson, shout-out to him. Rookie kicker, baby. Coming out there. All these kickers. These three kickers out here, baby. These game winners. Look at us as shout out players now. We're here. Shout-out to soccer, bro. Yeah. Out here producing these kickers. Fucking beast, bro. Fucking beast. Man, how, how much of a bum do you think Baker Mayfield feels like? <laughs> that he got picked number one, and he's the worst quarterback in his division. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> they got – Everyone else in his division's a MVP or a future MVP, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and Josh Allen. Yeah. And he's the guy who picked who got picked number one. Yeah. You're talking about in that draft class? I'm talking about yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. In the whole division, yeah. Baker Mayfield is the only dude who got picked number one out of all the quarterbacks. He's the number one pick, and he's the worst. I would have never picked him, to be honest with you. Like college, he was really good in college. Like, I'm not gonna fake on that. He was good, but He's small, bro. He never made throws where I was like, oh, man, that was a big-time cannon arm throw. Like, dude just had a really good fucking team, and he was throwing it easy to really good receivers. His running back was Joe Mixon. Like, Joe Mixon is really good. He can catch it out the backfield, and he can run for 100 easy like it's nothing. Like, Joe Burrow's got fantastic, you know, um, what do we call them, skill position players, like the receivers, and his running back is really good. Baker Mayfield had the you know, same situation. Joe Mixon is, you know Joe Mixon plays for the Bengals and uh, and and Joe Burrow, right? Yeah, yeah. I was talking about college, man. Baker Mayfield played oh. with Joe Mixon in college. But, yeah. Like, Gosh, you got you. Like, if you were to switch those two, Cleveland would have went to the Super Bowl three fucking times if Joe Burrow was playing for Cleveland. He's, he, Fuck yeah. Switch him right now. <laughs> they go to the Super Bowl. Oh, no. Beckham wouldn't have left. No, he wouldn't have. <laughs> the, the only thing I'll say as far as, like, Burrow compared to, like, Justin Herbert and like Mahomes and you know all the, the really good young quarterbacks and shit. Yeah. Mahomes just he can do a lot more. I feel like with less. Like me watching that fucking Super Bowl, and he had five replacement uh, linemen. All five, all five linemen were guys off the fucking street. 
he was unbelievable too. That that one play where he ran like 130 yards <laughs> and he never left the backfield. Yeah, <laughs> that was fucking crazy. Yeah. That. I, I, that was like when you played fucking Madden back in the day, yeah. and you're playing your little brother or something, and you get a pick, and then like return it the wrong direction all the way to your end zone, yeah. and then come back again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. now I'm telling you, bro. Like that. After watching that shit, I, I can't give it to anybody else until Burrow shows me some more. Like this is actually really fantastic, though. Like this team, the O line is garbage. Getting sacked nine times and still throwing for three fifty and winning the game. Your boy is a fucking beast. I do have to see him, like, win a Super Bowl, though. That's all I need. He gives me one. He wins one more game, Terry, and he has an opportunity to do it. Yeah. He's playing against your boy, Pat Mahomes. Yeah. Bengals, Chiefs, who do you got? I got Chiefs, man. I have to go with the Chiefs, man. The the Bengals O-line is just so bad. It's really hard to overcome because, like, you're not going to play against Ryan Tannehill's trash ass. And I don't care what anybody says. Ryan Tannehill's the worst quarterback of all these quarterbacks. Jimmy G, at least he doesn't turn the ball over like Ryan Tannehill was, bro. Like, he'll give you one. You, you missed these throws to the outside that he had yesterday, man. <laughs> there was one, bro, where the corner, like, for some reason, he just decided as soon as Jimmy G threw it, yeah. like, I'm not going to try to pick this. I'm going to make the tackle. <laughs> and he went to the outside of the receiver, yeah. uh, like, near the boundary, the out of bounds. And went for the tackle, and he was laughing with uh, Devontae Adams after the play. Like, damn, I really could have just stepped right in front of you and picked this shit. I don't know why I decided to go on the outside and tackle you. Yeah, I, I don't know. If, if also like, I don't even think the Bengals coach is like the greatest coach I've ever seen. Like schemes and shit. Like, I think he's he's a good Who coach. Is the Bengals coach. Who's huh? the Bengals coach? Who's know. the Bengals coach? What's exactly. The- it's not Zach Marvin, Taylor? It's not Marvin Lewis. I can tell you that. <laughs> no. Uh, I can tell you that for sure because we only got one black coach in the NFL. Yeah. And his name is Mike Thomas. Yeah. Well, after Todd Bowles did that, we were going to have a less uh, defensive coordinator. <laughs> but, yeah, nah, ne- next week, I think Chiefs got that. That's This game is going to be the game to watch, the fucking 49ers versus the Rams. I mean, it'll be good, but we all expect the Rams to win that game. If the, if the 49ers well, defense goes crazy like they've been. Listen, Terry, you say that, but the 49ers beat them both times this year. They did. They did. But I think it's going to be different. I think it's going to be different. It, it always happens. I do. The Saints beat the fucking – I'm picking the Bengals to go to the Super Bowl. No, you're sticking with your guns. Yeah. You're sticking with your guns. I, I, I don't see what, why I would switch at this point after everything's turned out so well. But, oh, that's what I'm saying, though. It's not Ryan Tannehill on the other side, bro. It's no, it's Pat Mahomes. It's going to be electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah, the defense is going to have to show up, though. The, the Bengals defense is going to have to stop them. If they can stop the Chiefs, I believe in the Bengals winning the game, but I don't think they can stop Mahomes right now, bro. And Tyreek Hill is playing really great. Kelsey's All they got to do is what the rest of the NFL did in weeks five through ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Just stop the big plays. That's it. Just make them beat. Tampa two every play. Yeah, but that's <laughs> welcome to Chicago, motherfucker. See, that's that's what's um, Mahomes is not being stupid anymore. He's not being a gunslinger. He's just taking his checkdowns. He's doing death by a thousand cuts now. Yeah, I mean, he's he's showing me hard to beat that against a guy who's disciplined. Yeah, you know, Jimmy G said something like that after the uh, beating the Packers. He was like, it was like a, a disciplined, mature game. That you had to be like mature in your mindset about that one mistake was going to cost it you. It was all about limiting errors and staying into it to the last second. Mm-hmm. Like the Rams won that game despite never leading. Yeah. So let that sink in. A, they never, lo- they won the game despite never leading for one second. You're about the 49ers? The 49ers. Yeah. Hey, that. Kudos to the special teams. So that's going to be the type of mental fortitude that you need to have in this next round. Limiting errors and whatnot. Talking about Pat Mahomes and the death by a thousand cuts. Because the playing field has been elevated once again, Terry. Bengals Chiefs. Once, Bengals Chiefs. I got Bengals. You got Chiefs. Rams 49ers. We both got the Rams. It's really hard to beat a team three times in the in the same year. Yeah. 
And I think the Rams have got to notice that Jimmy G cannot throw the boundaries <laughs> right now. <laughs> like, someone has got to have paid attention and noticed that he can only make throws in the middle of the field. I, I got to think the Rams take advantage of that. I hope so. I mean, I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, I, I really didn't watch the 49ers play the Cowboys until the end because I was like, how can the Cowboys lose? I really didn't watch the 49ers play the Packers because I'm like, well, how can the Packers lose? Now I got to watch these motherfuckers play, and I'm like, if it happens again, I'm like, damn, 49ers are fucking good. I don't know how the fuck the 49ers beat the Rams twice, but – I can't see it happen a third time. Like you said, it's hard to beat a team three times. We saw the Saints beat the Bucks twice, kick their ass, and then the Bucks, you know, beat them last year. Went to Super Bowl and won. I think that's a similar formation for the Rams, bro. They can't lose three times. Not it, the head coach is really, really good. I, you, what's his name? Young dude. Charlie yeah, Bay. he's a he's a good coach. He, he's not going to allow them to lose three times to a quarterback and Jimmy G that can't fucking throw the ball outside the numbers, like you were saying. Who are the receivers beside Debo Samuel, bro? I think in their two times they met up this year too, Terry, that Cam Akers was out injured. Was he? And they were like playing Sony Michelle and like uh, who else is the other dude who I had on my fantasy team? Oh, yeah, Dee Henderson. Name. Yeah, that's right, Daryl yeah. Henderson. So Cam Akers wouldn't even a factor. Now, if he puts the ball on the ground and carries it like a loaf of bread <laughs> again, he won't be a factor in a negative yeah. way. <laughs> hey, yo. So they. He cleans that up. Your boy Cam went through the hole with both his hands on it, though, and he fumbled it. And then stopped. <laughs> he went through like this and then changed. I don't know. That was weird, man. That was that was hella weird. But, hey, bro, the, I'm excited. I think Stafford's going to pull this one out, bro. I can't see the 49ers stopping them again. I mean, I, I think they figured him out. So, like, the last game they played was the last game of the season. I think they kind of figured him out because they – they played well. They scored 24 points on them. I just think the 49ers just, you know, they outdid them. Debo had a really fucking good game, if you remember that shit. That's, that was, I think that was the week when you wrote the article about, like, uh, Debo Samuel and Patterson kind of changing the game. Because yep. he was just going yep. crazy on them. Russian yep, and best. they had no answer. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. They had no answer for him in their run game. Um, I don't know. I got Rams, bro. I think the the – the matchup that, that's really going to swing this game to me is the Ram D-line versus the O-line um, for the 49ers. And the 49ers, they had the best O-line in the league the whole year with Alex Mack being best in his position as center, Trent Williams being best in his position as tackle. But Trent Williams hurt himself, Terry. He? He's out. That game over to Packles – or he was hobbled and limping around the whole time. If he's not full go, that now is a big question mark for the 49ers uh, if they hope to contain that three-headed monster of Leonard Floyd, Von Miller, and Aaron Donald for the Rams. Yeah, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see. Well, that's, that's the difference, though. So, like, the Rams, the pass rush is fantastic. But for some reason, they can't stop the teams from rushing the ball, though. That's the thing that fucks them up. And the 49ers are really good at running. So I feel like that's what kind of messes up every time when they get together because the 49ers can run. Because the Rams don't have good linebackers. No, they don't. But that's but that's the thing. The 49ers, yeah. like Kyle Shanahan's a beast at doing different things because they don't just, you know, drop back and run a regular – they don't do just regular runs. Yeah. They toss in it. They do jet sweeps and shit, reverses. Like, Hey, that game-winning run uh, against the Packers on third and seven, they got nine with Debo yeah. Samuel. They called that outside run. Kittle was talking about it after the mm -hmm. game. It was like, I saw they were in nickel. I saw that I was going to be blocking a safety as a tight end. Uh, he was like, I knew if we could just stay, uh, if we couldn't blow it up front, like in the guards and yeah. centers, that this is going. Like, this is going to yeah. win the game. They knew before to play that this is going to work. And so I think Shanahan will hunt a lot of those type of mismatches in the run game. Hopefully. But – this, is, this isn't going to be like a cold-ass snow game. It's going to be in L.A., in the fucking, you know, yeah. on the turf, in a dome. And I don't think Matthew Stafford is going to be like Aaron Rodgers and not test these corners out here for San Francisco. Yeah. Like, I don't think Cooper Cup is is and, and Cam Akers are going to get 21 out of the 26 available plays. Nah. Right? Nah. They, Odell nah. Beckham is going to stress their defense. 
right? They got Higby, uh, who's a good vertical tight end. Um, Van Jefferson is a really good third wide receiver. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's not even talking about Akers who, and Henderson, who are great pass catchers coming out of the backfield. I think a big – so. I think, I think he's got he's got to test these second and third corners for for San Francisco, and I they think got to do will. something. But I, I think a big reason why the 49ers ended up beating them when I just looked at the stats and shit. Odell Beckham only had two catches in both games, two catches for 18 yards, the identical stat line for both games. They they found a way to kind of shut him down. Cooper Cup went crazy, and Higby had a good games. Yep. They both had good games in both of the games, but you stopped that third threat either running the ball or Odell or any of the other receivers like Jefferson, like you were saying, I guess that's how you shut them down. But if they can figure out a way to kind of get Odell going, it's going to be hard to stop yep. Cup and Odell and Higby. Like that's going to be tough. So. Yeah. Yeah. But on the other side, the, uh, the Rams offensive line is banged up too. And they're starting left tackle Andrew Whitworth, um, despite already being the oldest player in the entire NFL is also hobbled on a hurt ankle. Ugh. How old is he? And he's going up uh, 41, I think. Jesus Christ. Yeah, the oldest non-quarterback. That's old as shit. Um, for a lineman. And for a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just going to keep it yeah, real. that's true. He, he's you know, a white guy with a big stomach, 41. <laughs> you out here keeping up with these 22-year-olds out of LSU? Flying on yeah. the edge? He's a left tackle or right? You said right tackle. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. So he'll be going up against Nick Bosa. Jesus. <laughs> so I think this 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 whole game is going to be a tale of two lines. The offensive line and the defensive line. And whoever wins that battle is going to win the game. Whether it's DeForest Buckner and, and – uh, or no, it's not DeForest Buckner who's on the, on the 49ers. Who's that great – Who's their defensive tackle who's good as shit? The 49ers one? I have yeah. no idea what that guy's name is, bro. I forget his name. He's like six foot eight. He's Jesus gigantic. Christ. Yeah, he's unbelievable. They got him and Bosa right next to each other. And, you know, that spells problems for a hurt offensive tackle. And on the other side, you got hurt Trent Williams facing up against Von Miller, Aaron Donald, and Larry. Is it Williams. DJ Jones? Gibbons? No. Or Omen Nihu. None of them. Or A Key, whoever the fuck that is. Arden Key. Nah, 6'5. That's the coach. Arden Key. (laughs) I thought so. Who's that motherfucker's name? Oh, no, I guess not. Uh, Who who cares? I don't know. I don't know shit about the 49ers like that, to be honest with you. I don't don't like watching teams that have shitty quarterbacks. Eric Armstead. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's six seven, not oh, six okay. eight, but still, That's, yeah. he's an absolute fucking he's wrecking ball. He's like a Calais Campbell type yeah. dude. He's a beast. He's a beast. Okay, I don't watch the Forty ers because I don't watch shit quarterbacks. Hey, this is this is what you need to know about the Forty ers They beat the Packers rushing three all yeah. game. Okay, they on their ass, huh? Hey, no block punts. That's how they cover up for their corners being shitty as fuck. They're like, all right, we're dropping eight in coverage every time. <laughs> this man Kyle Shanahan. Go get bro. after him. Your boy Kyle Shanahan, bro. What the fuck, man? He's on that different shit. Who's the defensive coordinator, though? D'Amico Ryan's. Ah. So is he the next? Yeah. Could be the second black head coach. Should we be NFL looking for him? Team. Because, I mean, if you got an offense that this so garbage and the defense. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, the way that he's, like, protected their corners the last two playoff mm-hmm. games. Aaron Rodgers couldn't take advantage at all. Yeah. Like, that's pretty great considering what the Falcons plan we played them is, all right, we're just going to pick on your corner. Like, this dude sucks. He can't guard our fifth wide yeah. receiver. And we just – Matt Ryan picked on this dude yeah. all game with our fifth wide receiver off a of practice Damn. So that's impressive to me that your corners are that bad and you're out here, like, putting them in positions where they're not getting toasted. Yeah, least. I guess. I don't know. We'll see, man. This – it's going to be a, a game of the minds. I, I like my boy McVay, though. Hopefully he gets it done. I like him. I, I like him as a coach. He's good. And Odell Beckham needs some success, man. I'm tired of people talking shit about him. It's just a hard work. Yes, sir. It's a hard work. So Terry will come back here in a week and preview the Super Bowl between the Rams and the Bengals. <laughs> you want to put a little wager on it? 
No. <laughs> I'm out of the wagers. <laughs> no wager? All right, cool, cool. Uh, Bro, it snowed all last week. I lost like 400 bucks in uh, coaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, couldn't know sure, sure. I wouldn't wager a farthing right now. I can't afford it. <laughs> Guys, donate to our Patreon. <laughs> Please. Uh, you can send it to a Venmo account. I think there's actually a spot on uh, a place on Spotify where we accept donations. Oh, really? Shit. Yeah. Hey, look, catch the pod everywhere, baby. www.dhmspod.com. I saw you finally put the shit back on Spotify again. <laughs> there been like eight <laughs> episodes in a row. My computer, yeah. bro. Dude, I've been having all these fucking That's issues. That's all good. And, and I uh, just broke my external hard drive last week, too, so we lost <laughs> – I lost our fucking logo, the overlay for the podcast, oh, our intro, our outro, and all of our episodes. Damn. So I had to redo all of them. Damn, those. how long did that take? Fucking whole day? That sucks. It took like four hours to do the intro, the outro, and the overlay. Oh, man. Yeah, babe. We back, man. We back. Yes, yeah, sir. No interruptions. Yeah. Off the hard drive. Don't need it. <laughs> I'll do all the work. Again. Shout out to the so uh, we can, yeah. Shout out to our new subscribers too. You know we're, we're continuing to go up. Where are we at? Like one hundred and thirteen, one twelve, or some shit. Yeah, one twelve. Got another one last night. Shout out to our Uber drivers uh, uh, who was playing some Stephen A. Smith in the car, talking about his reaction to the Cowboys losing <laughs> it. I was like, dog. <laughs> With respect to Stephen A, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we got some fire for you. It could be a little better, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. to all of our new listeners, we appreciate y'all as well. Well, hey, ho- hopefully next weekend of football can live up to this past one, Terry. I'm not sure that's humanly possible, yeah, I don't think but so. yeah. I'm very excited to see yeah. it try. All right, man. Hey, until next time. Hey, also though, once all the NFL's done. I got a bone to pick with you, Steph Curry, motherfuckers. That sh- this shit's not a conversation. This LeBron Steph shit's not a fucking convo, all right? But no, it's once not. NFL's it's over, Jokic. We'll get into that shit, all right? Yeah. Thanks for stepping across the yeah. line with us. Nico and Jokic. Yeah, for another week. That's right. Who's Mondin Bailey? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to our podcast this evening. Thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. <laughs>